learners let's welcome to the video number 10 of the entire cryptographic series and this particular uh, video is purely focused on hashing in this we are trying to explore all the different facets of hashing which are very critical for you to know so do not miss out and let's go through this so what is basically hashing you can understand hashing as a one way function right concept number 1 you can you can think it as hashing as a one way mathematical function when we say one way mathematical function function what does it mean it is a kind of algorithm which means something can be done but it cannot be reverse engineer you can you can relate it to real time for example if you have a glass uh, in your hand uh, made of glass and you leave it what will happen it will is stuck on the floor it will get broken into pieces you will not be able to join it back isn't it so that is similar thing with hashing as well once you have uh, generated a hash value out of a uh, particular text right you cannot use that particular hashed value to generate the original message again so it is also non reversible non reversible and that is where you should expect as as well any good crypt, uh, hashing algorithm that should not be reversible for sure okay now the second concept which you should understand is hashing is an algorithm you can treat it like a mixture and grinder and you put any size of text into this let's say i am taking a rat i am taking an elephant it doesn't matter for hashing algorithm it will just make sure that both of them when they are kind of juiced up they will be of a particular fixed size this will be a fixed size so a hashing algorithm always gives you uh, the outcome in the fixed size and that is why you might have seen when we say uh, sha uh, 256 so what is this 256 stands for that means the outcome of sha 256 is a hash value which is length of 256 character for example 512 sha 2512 512 means the outcome is 512 characters or you can say uh, bits not characters actually right the third important property of a particular hashing algorithm is called as deterministic deterministic so don't get carried away with this new term it's nothing it's saying that it has to be repeatable that means if there is a there is a uh, text with me if i let it go through the hashing algorithm on a window machine it will give me some output when i use the same thing on linux machine or any other platform or maybe 100 times i am doing it all the time it has to give me the same outcome that is called as deterministic every time it has to produce the same outcome okay and that is very important because this property is definitely taken as an input uh, for hashing so that it can be used as a integrity control whenever we talk about hashing one thing is for sure the primary function of hashing is to provide you integrity it doesn't provide you confidentiality but it provides you integrity and integrity as well it is a detective control it is not a preventive control when you attach a particular hashing algorithm with a message it does not mean that it will not let anybody change the message it can only detect if somebody has modified this particular message uh, the particular other party will be able to recognize or identify that the message has been tampered with so that is another core concept which you should understand even though in certain situations with different uh, flavors we use uh, hashing algorithm even to get uh, you know authentication also done when we use it with digital signature we are able to produce known repudiation origin authentication all of that as well okay now let's also talk about um, uh, a concept which is called as hash collusion hash collusion what is hash collusion 
has collision is a uh, situation where let's say there is one text text one there is another text text two and when we pass it through the hashing algorithm we get the same output we get the same output this particular situation which is not very common actually but it may happen in certain cases it has it has been seen that this can happen so this particular thing is called as hash collision when two different text entirely two different text they generate the same uh, this thing just uh, just uh, um, just try to relate uh, there are two different people uh, who are using two different passwords completely two different password but the hash value is the same if that is happening that is something which is called as hash pollution okay so which is not supposed to be a particular hash algorithm should not be susceptible to the hash pollution okay the next concept we are going to talk about here is, uh, you know, when, when there is a text, plain text, right, and we let it pass through the hashing algorithm, it gives us a hash value, right. This hash value is called as message digest. I think that is clear, okay, that is called as message digest. Now, this message digest when we use it as it is when we use it as it is just a minute when we use a hash uh, you know as it is it is called as message digest and message digest uh, like normally a hash output hash output is called as a message digest and this message digest can be used for checking the integrity of the message it can be checked for integrity of the message. Let's say Mr. A wants to send a message to Mr. B, but Mr. A wants to be sure that my message is not getting tempered during travel. What he will do, he will take the message and he will uh, generate a hash out of it and he will concatenate both of these and then transfer to the other side. The other side will pick up this particular message they have their own hashing algorithm the same hashing algorithm they will generate their own message digest and then they will compare with what you are sending this will be compared with this if they are getting compared if they, that everything is good this means that authentication is done or you can say the integrity is intact so the same thing is used for integrity also in many cases we use the same thing for authentication as well that is why i say hashing is also used for authentication as well but the primary function is integrity right so when we use the particular hashing algorithm in a way to identify integrity it is called as message identification code mic right the problem with mic is this for example you are sending this particular message and you have sent the message along with the hash what if a mr uh, c as an hacker comes here and he takes this particular message he modify this particular message generate another hash same hash then he if he sends across to b uh, b will not even come to know because he has no source to compare it he will think whatever is coming is okay he will generate the hash out of it it will only generate this hash only and that way mr b will think that this is a genuine message so this kind of attack when somebody is able to modify a message and recreate the message digest using the same algorithm and then pass it on to the next party this leads to a man in the middle attack which is not good so that is where we have to move little away from mic mic is still being used for example when you copy some file in your system from one location to another location how system verifies that all the file has been copied they recalculate the hash value of the data which has been copied and they will generate with the uh, with the hash value of the data you you decided to copy and this way the system get to know okay it's 100 percent done now isn't it same way we also use it for cyclic redundancy checkouts also so that is the beauty of having mic but mic again is not good if you want to transfer data from one point to another b another point because that is where somebody can play with it so for that what should we do 
for that the trick is let mr a and mr b use the same thing in little different way let them share a pre decided key let them use a particular key here okay so when mr a want to send this message to mr b he is going to xor this with the key he is going to add this with the key and now this becomes the message then he let this entire thing go through the hashing algorithm and generate the outcome message digest you know wh what now this digest will not be called as message identification code this message digest is now called as m uh, ac message authentication code why because there is a secret key which has been mixed here the same secret key is also existing on the other side this is pre shared and because of this you know indirectly there is a way in which we can authenticate as well the two parties can very comfort comfortably authenticate also and this is what we use all the time okay this is what we use all the time now in this particular case even if an attacker comes here and he try to modify the message he will be able to modify the message anyways because hashing is not a preventive control it's a detective control but this guy will not be able to generate the same hash value no because this guy does not have the key does the attacker has key no right so this guy will not be able to generate the same thing and that is where when this particular message tempered message reaches to b and he recalculate everything it will not match and the message will be discarded <coughs> okay so that's the another concept that is called as uh, uh, we use it for authentication as well integrity plus authentication okay and now this is called as message authentication code i think there was one question from somebody yeah what kind of key is that it is a, a it is a pre shared secret between the two parties so every time they do communication it can be happening during the session also they will establish a pre shared key between them and then they will use it for the same purpose even they can authenticate as well after that okay so that is called as message authentication code so from a cissp exam perspective you should be very clear what is the difference between mic and msc okay now another important concept is called as salting this entire when we mix a key with the message this is not only done to to make the uh, you know message travel from point a to point b sometimes we also use it to store the hashes as well for example in very common way your passwords they are stored on the system not in the form of like the password you generate they are actually going through a key stretching process there is a process called as key stretching like we use pkcs and these kind of algorithm to convert your password into something called as a hash value and then this hash value for example a b f c d hash to dollar let's say this is the hash value we will also mix it up with some random salt value a f c 2 3 right so this value is called as salt and this will then be used whenever we want to uh, do the authentication and these kind of thing so the same thing salting can also be used to make sure that you know in in password the biggest problem is what because if you are using very common password let's say it's based on your uh, you know family member name all of this very very dictionary based thing so there is a attack called as dictionary attack this particular dictionary attack has a list of all the common words we normally use and then they will they will not be able to reverse engineer your hash because you know reverse engineering a hash is a big big task very very big task so instead of reverse engineering they will take your hash and they will try to match your hash with the existing hash values because you know there is something called as hash collision and there is a also a particular formula which says that uh, which is called as birthday paradox which means that if there is a classroom 
and there are like uh, we are trying to see if two people have the same birthday if 23 people are there in a particular class there is a mathematical calculation which says that in 23 people like at least uh, two people will have the same birthday that's mathematically proved that is called as birthday paradox so attacker knows this particular fact and that is why instead of reverse engineering the hash what these attackers are doing they are actually trying to compare your existing hash with a list of so many hashes like thousands and lakhs of hashes by using certain software when we do this this is called as birthday attack this particular list this particular list of file or something which has all these pre-decided hash it is called as rainbow tables okay now if you want to defeat a dictionary attack the best way is to implement salting this thing salting so that is a great solution whenever you want to do this okay so in any other term because you know in CISSP exam sometimes they will use different words for this so uh, sometimes the same phenomena which we have discussed in this case and this case this is sometimes also referred to as keyed hash keyed hash and some of the algorithm which actually make use of keyed hash one of the very prime algorithm is called as hmac hashed mac this is also called as hashed message authentication code right i think we have covered all the concept related to hashing right i hope you like it and i will see you in the another video